What is the scariest or creepiest thing you have seen or heard? Part 5. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. The Smiling Man from R. Let's Not Meet. About five years ago, I lived downtown in a major city in the U.S. I've always been a night person, so I would often find myself bored after my roommate, who was decidedly not a night person, went to sleep to pass the time I used to go for long walks and spend the time thinking. I spent four years like that walking alone at night and never once had a reason to feel afraid. I always used to joke with my roommate that even the drug dealers in the city were polite. But all of that changed in just a few minutes of one evening. It was a Wednesday, somewhere between one and two in the morning. And I was walking near a police patrolled park, quite a ways from my apartment. It was a quiet night, even for a weeknight, with very little traffic and almost no one on foot. The park as it was most nights was completely empty. I turned down a short side street in order to loop back to my apartment. When I first noticed him at the far end of the street on my side was the silhouette of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar to a waltz, but he finished each box with an odd forward stride. I guess you could say he was dance walking headed straight for me, deciding he was probably drunk. I step it as close as I could to the road to give him the majority of the sidewalk to pass me by the closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lanky and wearing an old suit. He danced closer still until I could make out his face. His eyes were open wide and wild head tilted back slightly, looking off at the sky. His mouth was formed in a painfully wide cartoon of a smile between the eyes and the smile. I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer. I took my eyes off of him to cross the empty street as I reached the other side. I glanced back and then stopped dead in my tracks. He had stopped dancing and was standing with one foot in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me, but still looking skyward smile still wide on his lips. I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but kept my eyes on the man. He didn't move. Once I had put about half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to where he had been standing to find him gone for the briefest of moments I felt relieved until I noticed him. He had crossed the street and was now slightly crouched down. I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance and the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I had looked away from him for no more than ten seconds. So it was clear that he had moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time staring at him, and then he started moving toward me again. He took giant, exaggerated, tiptoed steps as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone, except he was moving very, very quickly. I'd like to say at the point I ran away or pulled out my pepper spray or my cell phone or anything at all, but I didn't. I just stood there completely frozen as the smiling man crept toward me, and then he stopped again, about a car length away from me, still smiling, his smile still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. What I meant to ask was, what the fuck do you want in an angry, commanding tone? What came out was a whimper. What the fuck? Regardless of whether or not humans can smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my own voice, and that only made me more afraid, but he didn't react to it at all. He just stood there smiling, and then after what felt like forever, he turned around very slowly and started dance, walking away, just like that, not wanting to. Turn my back to him again. I just watched him go until he was far enough away to almost be out of sight, and then I realized something he wasn't moving away anymore, nor was he dancing. I watched in horror as the distant shape of him grew larger and larger. He was coming back my way, and this time he was running. I ran, too. I ran until I was off of the side road and back, onto a better lit road with sparse traffic looking behind me. Then he was nowhere to be found the rest of the way home. I kept glancing over my shoulder, always expecting to see his stupid smile. But he was never there. I lived in that city for six months after that night, 
and I never went out for another walk. There was something about his face that always haunted me. He didn't look drunk. He didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly insane, and that's a very, very scary thing to see. Two. Years ago, I lived in a townhouse above the an old couple that were the landlords. This was in the historic section of Albany, NY, near the park. The landlords were in their 60s, maybe early 70s. This place actually had a plaque on the front of it saying it was built in 1880-something and that some rich state senator had lived there. There's places like this all over the area that had been subdivided and rented out. I lived there for a year, and every now and then, always while I was trying to sleep, I would hear faint organ music accompanied by some rhythmic banging sounds. I always have slept with a fan to drown out any ambient noise and sleep better. This music was just floating through my room. No one was above me, just the old. People who went to bed at nine below me, I would get up and try to find the source of the sounds. But it just seemed like it was everywhere and nowhere, since I never heard any music or anything from any other room. And I never heard that music during the day. I concluded that it was the ghosts of previous occupants that had lived there decades before. This actually affected my decision to live there again when my lease was up. The old couple even offered to knock $50 a month off the rent if I resigned, opting instead to live in a newer place. Account 3. I've been on a tour at an old prison, and some of the scariest shit I've ever experienced has happened there. I'm not convinced in ghosts and whatnot, but if there are, they're definitely there. Every other person who works there has their own creepy story. My scariest was when I had a group of about 30 people in the gallows one night, the room where people wear hanged, and the room is made of corrugated tin. So I was there doing my bit, when suddenly there was this huge bang on the roof. Everyone looked up and a few people screamed by, a lot laughed. We have a few actors that jump out on tours. So they probably thought it was that the banging didn't stop, though. It was kind of irregular at sort of like half-second intervals, like boom, 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 and people we getting creeped me included. So I took the group outside now. The roof of the room is a slanted a frame, so if you walk back a bit, you can see the outside roof. We all watched as this one bit of tin looked like it was being stomped on from the outside, moving and everything still banging. When I took the group to the next spot, we finished off the tour and a few people thought it was a joke, but it genuinely terrified me. I've got some ghost photos on my galaxy. I'll try and upload now, but I'm not very good at internetting. Account 4. When I was a kid, my parents went out one night and left me home alone. We had a bunch of cats, and we fed them all in separate rooms with the doors closed to keep them from stealing each other's food. My parents had fed them. I only had to let them out. I went to the back of the house to let out Playful, who ate in the room directly across the hall from my bedroom, when I opened the door. There was blood everywhere. His food dish was about a quarter filled with it, and there were bloody paw prints on the floor near the door, but not a speck in on my cat. I checked his paws and his mouth. There was no blood on him at all when my parents came home. They checked him over and weren't able to find any explanation either. Account 5. Backcountry camping alone can be incredibly scary with a friend you can at least discuss that bump you heard in the night, or you can be consoled that another will help you if something goes wrong. But alone, it is an entirely different story. The day goes by fine. You hack out, take a lunch. Break, get, to camp, set, stuff, up, have a little fun. Then it starts to get dark, you. Have a fire and you can see a little at first. But before long, total darkness sets in. It is disheartening. To not be able to see your hand in front of your face. Soon enough, you start hearing things. Footsteps, twigs, snapping brush, moving. Depending on where you are camping, you might hear coyotes, wolves at night. Coyotes have more of a shrill, yelping howl, almost hyena-like. Wolves have this hauntingly beautiful droning howl. The worst part is that you will hear them everywhere. You'll hear a howl a couple miles away. Then you'll hear one a mile away. Then you'll hear one 500 yards away. Pretty soon, you can be surrounded by this eerie chorus. It doesn't make for the best. Sleep storms are also worrisome out in the middle of nowhere. Lightning has claimed many hikers, I also stumbled upon a black bear. 
20 after way once despite nearly having a heart attack, shitting my pants, accepting death, it noticed me pretty quickly and fled. 6. Just last year I was in NYC and riding a packed subway mid-ride. A man gets up with a strangely large backpack. He cleared his throat and said, All right, everyone, the time has come. And in that moment, the people on the sub's faces turned to fear. A mother nestled her son and I tensed up, ready to pounce. He continued to say, I am a poor man in need of food if anyone has anything on them. Or if they could take me out for food, it would save my life. My girlfriend and I got him some KFC and asked him to approach a large group of people differently. All in all, he was a nice guy, didn't even look homeless. My girlfriend still refers it as the day the KFC guy was gonna kill us. Account 7. When I was 16, I was sitting at a table with my mom talking about life, musing on the afterlife and reincarnation. The usual, I began to laugh and say, you know, I'm pretty sure I remember my past life. This was about the time her face went pale. I asked her why. That's when she began to list all of the details of my silly past life, which I always felt was just a recurring dream I must have. She told me how I was the youngest child in a family of poor travelers, how my crib was the top drawer of any dresser where we would sleep, and my mother was a tall, bony, angry-looking woman with her hair pulled high, always wearing a long dress. All the details I was about to tell her, for what I thought was the first time, how did you know? All of that I've never told you before. I said, because that isn't the first time you've told me. She said, you told me that story many times when you were a baby after you first learned to talk. I don't believe it. And the worst thing, she said with a dark brow, was when I would come to play with you and you would tell me your other mother was behind me. Account 8. I was about 7 to 8 years old. And normally after school, my mom sets up the tub so I can have my afternoon bath. Keep in mind that my bathroom was tiny and there were no room for someone to hide in without being spotted immediately. So my mom watches me go in the tub, gives me a toy and walks away to the kitchen to finish cooking. I wanted to splash around in the water with my toy. So I closed the glass sliding door of the tub. As soon as I closed the sliding door, it quickly opened on its own. My tiny little mind couldn't fathom how that happened. A few seconds later, the sliding door rapidly opened and closed for a few seconds. I started screaming and my mother ran to the bathroom to find me crying in the tub. I told her what happened, but she didn't believe me. The sliding door was closed when she found me crying in the bathroom for over 20 years. It bugged me. Was it part of my imagination? It felt completely and entirely real. Account 9. I actually had the most frightening nightmare the other day. I was coming home from work, and it was dark out as I walked up the steps to my front door. I saw little children playing on the lawn but couldn't make out if they were neighbors or not. I walked up close to them, and they were adults with kids' masks on, but the kids' masks looked so real, and they started coming. Towards me, I kept backing up, but the steps never ended. Account 10. This happened just last night. I woke up randomly at about 2. 0 a.m. to the sound of footsteps in the hallway. I figured it was just my roommate getting home from her late shift. But after about five minutes of hearing the footsteps pacing back and forth, I got up to see what was going on when I opened my bedroom door. The footsteps stopped, and there was no one in the hallway. I checked my roommate's room, and she was fast asleep. I have no idea what it was, but it freaked me out enough to sleep with the lights on for the rest of the night. Account 11. Growing up, I lived in the middle of the woods. No neighbors for about a mile on each side, and we owned 60 acres of forest, then a swamp after that. So basically, I lived in the middle of nowhere one summer when I was about 14. I was out in the middle of the woods playing with my dog, I'm an only child, and both of my parents were out of town. When I kept feeling something hit my elbow, I'd go to throw Max's ball, and the bump would make me throw it almost straight up, assuming it was just me bumping it on trees or something. I ignored it after the fourth or fifth time of it happening. I thought, well, this sucks. I'll just go home. Walking back, I felt uneasy, but I knew I was just freaking myself out because we were alone. About an hour later, Max and I are at home on the couch when the garage door opens and he starts barking. 
barking, barking like crazy. I hop up to go let in my mom or dad. Even though they were home really early, I peered through the peephole and saw the door was still shut and no one was in the garage. Quieting Max down, I opened the door slowly and called out for my dad. Nothing, no response at all. So I go out to check the door and it's still locked, okay? Sure, weird. But oh well, Max heard it too. So at least I know I'm not crazy. About 20 minutes later, I hear the door open again, and this time, Max starts growling like crazy. I quiet him down again and just assume it's the wind or something. Making noise, even though by this point my heart is racing, I hear footsteps come up the stairs and think, oh, geez, Dad really is home this time and hop up and run to the door. It starts to jiggle, so I run faster to let him in. I peep through the hole, and even though my hand is loosely around the jiggling handle, there's no one on the other side of the door. Terrified, I go hide on the couch with all the lights on. Max is still growling. About an hour after that, I start to feel a little better, even though I'm still terrified. Then I hear the door handle jiggle again. This time it was Max jiggling it. He needed to go outside, and the only way outside is through the garage. Fantastic, I literally sprint with him to the kennel, and as I'm standing in there, I decide to ask this thing questions to make myself feel better. Because I knew it wouldn't answer me thinking about what to ask it. My eyes are drawn to the huge, heavy oak door on the kennel. It was always open because it was too heavy for me to move easily. I said, okay, ghost, if you're real, you'll shut this heavy door. Nothing. A minute goes by. Nothing. Max is still sniffing around. I turn around to yell at him to hurry up, and then from behind me I hear, click, I whipped around and saw the giant door had swung shut and latched. Okay, clearly it was just the wind, it wasn't really windy, but it was the wind for sure. Had to be. I proceed. Okay, ghost, that was the wind. If you're really real, you'll open this massive door back up, nothing. I relax a bit, and then squat down with my head in on my knees, reminiscing about how lame I just was being scared, when I hear click, clack. The door was now wide open. Max was done. So we booked it back into the house, locking every door in the house. For the next four hours, I would hear the footsteps on the stairs, and the door handle jiggling every few minutes. Until finally around 11 p.m., my dad walks in and yells, at me for wasting electricity, I never told him or my mom about it. Until about a four months later, when my dad came in from hunting after dark, he looked shaken and I asked him what was wrong. He said he aimed at two deer, but missed both completely. Because it felt as if something was hitting his elbow and making him shoot way above the deer. That's when I told him everything. Account 12. Creepiest. But proves I have some kind of good energy watching my back. I was about 16 and home alone in my house at night. This was back in the day when MSN Messenger was the thing to do. So I was chatting away on there with some friends, and my internet kept cutting out. So I would be signed out of MSN and then signed back in. This went on for a while and kept cutting out, quicker and quicker. Eventually, I couldn't stay online for more than 30 seconds, so I was like, fuck this and get up from my computer chair to leave the room the moment I was at the door. Way turning the corner to go up the stairs, the light fixture falls off the ceiling and shatters where I had been sitting on the computer chair. I ran upstairs and proceeded to hide under. My blankets until my parents got home to- TLDR. Almost got injured, but some good ghosts saved my ass. Count 13. I had been working on a student film a few years ago, and I was tasked with taking care of all of the equipment earlier that day. I had leaned the camera crane against the wall in its large, oddly shaped bag, not thinking anything of it fast forward to that night when I wake up to find a dark figure leaning against my wall as if staring at me. Sleep. I slowly rouse myself, making sure to stay very still before mustering up the courage to say, Who are you? in a shaky voice filled with terror. I sat there motionless for ten minutes before I fully woke up and realized I am a dumbass. Strangely, the most terrified I have ever been. Count 14. A few days ago, I was sitting on my couch just doing Facebook Reddit things. Now, mind you, the day before, I had already had three spider run-ins and two centipede sightings, and as an arachnophobic, just freaking nope, so I'm sitting at my computer, and I see my cat waltz by. 
He jumps up to the back of the couch like he always does and sits himself down behind me. I don't really look back where because, well, read it. Then I see some movement to my left. Don't worry, I think to myself. That's just my cat's tail swishing back and meow, my cat makes a cute, adorable meow. To my right, whatever is moving to my left is not my cat. I slowly horror movie reveal, turn my head and look down. And there is a centipede about three inches long, crawling its way across. My chest, I start making... Noises, as this disgusting little critter crawls to the center of my chest. Stops, looks up as if to indicate a speed dash towards my face and then continues across my chest. It then crawls under my armpit, to my back where I can't see it. Thankfully, I was wearing a dress shirt, which I literally ripped off and sacrificed to save myself, leaving it and the centipede on the couch. I haven't sat on that couch in about half a week, and I go around the living room when I can. Edit, it TLDR centipede crawled across a very distressed arachnophobic,